So most people don't know uh, my story unless they know me personally. But first of all, I, I'm not I'm not a jab model that you know they just brought in and, and you know they dressed her up in, in the Nike jab or whatnot. But three years ago, I was deeply struggling with my hijab. Um, I had been wearing it for around 14 years, and um, I was going to actually take it off because the struggle was real. Like, I'm an athlete, I run marathons, I climb mountains. Every time I go anywhere, it's like, how are you gonna run in all these layers, or aren't you hot? And I'm like, yeah, hot, but you're also hot. And all these, you know, negative, random comments that become excessive at some point where you, you, you feel like you're gonna give it up. And um, I remember 2014, I, I sat my dad down and I was like, look, I, I'm really struggling, I'm not happy, I wanna take it off. And he's like, okay, fine, well, do whatever you want. You're 34 years old, you're, you, know, you can do what you wanna do because you're gonna be responsible for your decision. But I was like, oh, really, is it that easy? I'm just gonna give up something that has been my identity for so long. So I was like, I'm not a dead fish to so just simply go with the flow, I'm gonna, start something on social media to give me empowerment and to support me. And I started a group that I named Surviving Hijab. It was on the 24th of August, 2014. And um, it was very random. I had zero social media background. Initially, uh, it was just like me, you know, adding and handpicking girls that I knew randomly from Facebook. And I was like, you know what, these girls are gonna be my support or my community. The following week, we exploded to 200 and then thousands, and then by November 2014, we hit 40,000 women from all around the world. And what's so special about this group, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a closed group, so if you, unless you look it up, it will never pop up on Facebook for you. And that's why like, even Facebook has gotten in touch and they're so fascinated by it. Here to date, we are 560,000 women from all around the world. And uh, Naha, Naha is uh, one of our admins. She works night and days to approve posts, and, and she works really, really hard. So my point is when I felt like, oh my God, so this is a phenomenon. Women are struggling with their hijab. It is a struggle. So I was like, wait a second. So I'm an athlete. There is no athletic representation of Muslim women at any like athletic level. Like None of the big brands have done it. Reebok, Adidas, or whatnot. No one has done it. But as a Nike girl, and you know, I've been a Nike fan since forever, I thought of writing them an email, you know? And I didn't care about the outcome. I was just gonna drop an email to someone who I knew was going to be responsible, and they responded to me the next day. So I put them in, in, in the email, I, I attached a photo of myself. I had just run a half marathon, and I told them how I do triathlons in my hijab, I climb mountains in my hijab, I run marathons in my hijab, and, and, and that's okay. But we just don't see so many women doing it. And if, if you do, you stand out so much. You don't have to stand out, it should be the norm. So, so Nike responded to me the next day and they said, okay, great, we have been having similar conversations. And that was November uh, 25th, 2014. And they asked to meet me. So we met and, and we sparked up the conversation about why is it Nike representing Muslim women? And in January 2015, I became the first ever hijabi athlete to appear in the Nike Women campaign. And here today, so three years later, we have a Nike hijab, you know, that is catering for Muslim athletes. And I think Halima has also tried it. And you look amazing in your Instagram uh, photo. And, and, and that's why, and that's why it's, it's so important, you know, if you want to wear a hijab as a young girl, here, you have something to wear. And I remember when the campaign came out in March 2017, and I was the face of it. I remember there were so many comments like, oh, this is not hijab, look at how tight her pants are, and um, this is a false representation, this girl doesn't represent us. Well, wait a second, you don't know anything about my story. You don't know what I do, you don't know who I am as a human being. The FIBA, for those of you, how many of you are basketball players? Anyone? Basketball players. Great, so did you know that the FIBA, which is the International Federation of Basketball, actually does not allow, did, or did not, sorry, did not allow Muslim hijabi athletes to participate in international championships if they wear the hijab. Do you think this is fair? No. However, this actually changed in May 2017, and they used my uh, Nike Boy hijab photo to announce it. something to Mona. Um, I think like as you know Muslim women or hijabi Muslim women or whatnot I think um, we owe it to the world every time we travel to educate the world on who we are you know and where we come from like for example when I'm climbing mountains I'm the only hijabi Arab girl in any expedition 
you know, and I've climbed like five of the highest mountains in the world, and it's always like, really, like uh, Muslim women are allowed to do that? There is nothing in the Quran or the Islam that, that says that Muslim women are not allowed to do these things, you know, as long as you're not hurting someone or offending someone, you know, the world is literally your worst and you just go out there and, and, and do your thing. And um, on that, I just want to add a, a message to the, to the little girls. Um, you know, when, when I was 20-something, because I'm obviously the oldest one on the panel, which is fine, but... Um, <laughs> the fittest one and the healthiest one. And, uh, <laughs> well, I keep offering her free personal training so that she can feature me on her YouTube, and she doesn't accept it. So, I I think think it how, how many times have I offered you free personal training? Okay. And she's like, oh, I'm always struggling, you know, like I'm always there doing this. Yeah, but I did one time in Thailand. So, I'm fine with Haifa, and I'm not getting free to Haifa. Anyway, so, so yeah, so this whole, this, inshallah, yeah, running my way out of the battle with you, okay? <laughs> so, so like, when I, when, when this whole idea of, of mountain climbing came to me, I was 28 years old, I found out about the first Egyptian guy who climbed Everest, I was like, oh my god, I was fascinated by the idea that an Arab person can actually scale such a huge mountain, which is Everest, and I remember sat there and I told my dad, oh my god, I'd love to do that, and he's like, what? You're never going to be able to do that. One, your girl. Two, so watch, watch, watch the, the trail of the conversation. One, you're a girl. Two, you're a hijabi. From my dad. And my dad is like, he's like 65 years old, very well-educated man. But these are just stereotypes that are placed on us. And why? What makes a girl not able to climb a mountain or become, you know, a, 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 like a, she, she was presenting a Nobel Prize. You know, like who would have thought like, like a girl is actually able to do that, you know? Wasn't it like a Nobel Prize award? Yeah, YouTube hosting, so I yeah. didn't give him that. Exactly. So, so first of all, I didn't win it. Some people thought I won. I'm like, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so first, first, because I'm a girl, and the second thing is like, uh, you wear the hijab. And it's why I'm saying this in Egyptian, but like, you, you just make them like your mom's circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please, no, they can watch it on YouTube. But, but yeah, so, so don't allow anyone to belittle your ideas no matter how huge they are. Like if you are capable, if God is, is allowing you to dream so big, seriously, know in your heart that one day you're really going to achieve them. I would have never ever ever thought that exactly 10 years later, you know, from the time when I was 28, that I'm gonna be sitting on a panel talking to little girls or you know, young women or whatnot about me having climbed five of the highest mountains in the world. You know, my dad, my dad has come around, my dad has come around, now he would love for me to become the first Egyptian woman to climb Everest, which is something I, 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 I would have never, ever, ever thought would be possible. So if I, if I knew then what I know now, it's hold on to your dreams, don't waste your 20s feeling small or not able or not capable. Really, this is not like, you know, just little talk. I wish I started when I was 25, 22, and not waited until I was 34 to stand up for myself and be like, you know what, I have the money, I'm gonna book my expedition, I'm going. And I remember my dad was like, what? You didn't ask my permission. I was like, no, 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 wait, like I'm paying for it. I want your blessings for, it, for the trip. I want you to agree, but like, let's have an open conversation. Have the open conversation with your parents about whatever you want to do, whether it's to pursue a career in London, or you know, if you, if you want to open like a shelter for dogs or whatever, things that people think, oh my God, you're so weird. Great, you know, you're doing something different, and this is what the world needs right now. Thank you, Manal. Thank you. Certified as a Muay Thai instructor, I'll personally train you. Okay. Uh, and there's also uh, Lara here. She's uh, yeah. 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 Please train me. Actually, like I have a hashtag. It's called Save Haifa's Life. <laughs> Save Haifa's butt, actually. Yeah. 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 And let's give her three months for her first five push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna commit. Well, that's like uh, yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah.
You're so beautiful. I was like, looking at you, I'm like, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I'm like Asian. Yeah, bless you. I'm from Malaysia, by the way. This is a video. But oh, I, do a video. I want to come and run your marathon and climb. Oh, I've been to Malaysia. I've been to Langkawi. And I've been to Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to come soon. Malaysia, wait for me. I'm going to steal the influencers because this is where I'm going to